Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to perform the linear regression in GNU Octave. So whenever it comes to noisy data, we are maybe interested in a trend line and that's where the linear regression comes into the game. So the linear regression assumes a linear model describing our noisy data. So to explain it with a simple example, let's directly head over to the workspace and start our script by closing all maybe open windows, clearing all maybe set workspace variables and clearing our command window. So this time we will create a sample vector comparable to a time domain vector. We start at zero with an increment of 0 0.1 and we go up to 10. And we want to have this vector as a column vector, so we add a apostrophe here. So now n is a column vector. And now let's create a linear signal. Uh, let's say our linear signal is called x, and x is a straight line with a certain slope, let's say 3, times n, and uh, y-axis intersection, let's say 5. Okay. Now we have created our straight line. Let's plot the straight line just to have a look that it really is a straight line. Uh, we give everything a label here, the axis. Let's call the x-axis samples. Let's call the y-axis value just to indicate that we are here not talking specifically about time domain signals. We are talking about arbitrary signals. So, okay. Let's fire it up and I will show you the result. So yeah, we have a straight line here starting at 5 with the slope of 3. So okay, that is our, our um, basic signal. And now we will add some noise to that signal and then we try to to estimate the model fitting these noisy values and in the best case our fitted model is exactly our x signal 3 times n plus 5. So first let's create a noisy signal or, or let's call it x noise. So we have x and we add some arbitrary noise. Let's say 5 times Run-n, so generating normal distributed random values um, with the same dimension of x. And we scaled this random values with the value of 5. This is just the arbitrary value here I, I um, have chosen. And now let's also plot this signal. And here we can use the so-called scatter plot instead of um, having straight lines between the sample points. We only want to plot the sample points itself, so we use the scatter plot. So we plot n against x noise. Again, we have x label, which is our sample, our samples, and y label, our value. We turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer. So let's fire it up. Okay, here it is. Oh, this is the wrong window. So, here we have our generated noise signal in a scatter plot. And this is how a scatter plot looks like. Instead of having um, straight lines, so uh, between the sample values, the, with the scatter plot, you only plot the uh, values x against y or samples again against values. And now what you can see in this plot is that all the sample data has a certain trend. Of course, we have generated this, this uh, noisy data here by adding uh, a normal distributed random variable with the amplitude of five to our generated straight line. Remember our straight line was five beginning here uh, with the slope of three. So uh, three times our samples plus five. And now we want to fit a linear model through this data 
indicating us what is the trend here or what could be the underlying function. And if the estimation would be perfect, then our linear model would perfectly fit to our original signal X. So let's go back to our workspace. So how can we do this? So we have to generate a linear model for the linear regression. And I call the model X capital letter and it's the same for every linear regression type. So linear regression means that the regression model is linear, but the, the order of the linear model, uh, the, the order of the, uh, of, the, of the linear regression can be uh, order one, two, three, it can be any arbitrary polynomial, but because we are um, only interested in linear regression, we have an order of one. So the vec this model X, capital X, always has the same, the, the same shape. So the first column of X is filled with ones. So ones and as many ones as we have uh, signal samples. So at length X or length N. So uh, this time it's a column vector. So one length X means that the first column of our um, linear regression model is a column full of ones, as many ones as the length of X. So the second column will be our x axis values. Our x axis values are here n. So let's add n. Just have a look at the vector itself by firing it up. So here you can see the vector. So x, the first row are only ones. The second row are our x axis values n. And that's it. If we want to make a regression um, uh, of the order two, then we would add a third column. And in the third column, we would have the values of n to the power of two. If we would, for example, uh, if we want the linear regression model order three, then we would add a fourth column and the entries of the fourth column would be the values n to the power of three and so on. And so, okay, now we have our linear our regression model. And what we uh, want to estimate are these two parameters, our three, our slope, and our epsilon axis, uh, our y axis intersection. So let's store these two values in a vector called B. So th this is common in, in the regression analysis to call the coefficient vector B. And then it's quite simple. We have our model X and we backslash it, I call it backslash, <laughs> uh, by our observed values x noise. So again, several things are new here. First, this sign here. This means calculate the pseudo inverse to solve for b. And x noise here are our observed values, our noisy values. Another option to write this here could be B is the pseudo inverse of X times Y. This is another option of calculating it. So let's basically, let's call it into, uh, let's calculate it in two different ways. So X times uh, X noise, ah, uh, X noise. So two different ways of calculating our linear regression coefficients. Just let's fire it up and see what is the output. So here we have it. And as you can see, we get the same outputs. If we fire the script up again, we get a new random vector and we get new values. So, and we are close to the, to the real values. So we have here, the first entry of B is our Y axis intersection five. We estimated it with 4.6 quite good. And the second entry of B is our um, slope with three, 3.12. 3 so also quite good. And as you can see, both methods, methods 
so backslashing and using the pseudo inverse command giving us the same results. A third option is calculating the pseudo inverse itself but this is not numerical stable but um, just to g give you an um, just to to g give you some math what is behind the pseudo inverse command it's the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse and it's calculated that way this is not the numeric stable way but um, it should be enough for this example it's x transpose times x the inverse of the product times x transpose times our observed vector x noise our noisy vector let's fire it up again oh uh we have a failure here yeah so and as you can see we get the same values also using our direct calculation of the so-called pseudo inverse or in this in this uh, case here the more penrose pseudo inverse but again this version is not um, stable in a numerical way where the pseudo inverse is and also the backslash operators but what's going on behind is calculating the more penrose pseudo inverse so okay now we have calculated our our regression coefficients but now let's have a look if they are really good and how it looks like so we have here our scatter plot again i will will show you our scatter plot so now let's plot our estimated linear signal inside this uh, noisy values here and see how well they fit how well this estimated uh, um, line fits the data so okay so let's create a new plot then it's easier for you to follow me so we have here our scatter plot and then hold on we can use the plot command to plot inside the scatter plot we plot n our samples against our estimated linear model so as you can see the first entry in b is always the y-axis intersection so the slope is the second entry in b this is uh, how octave and also matlab um, is, uh, uh, gives you um, polynomials as output so the highest order coefficient so the 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 least order coefficient or the coefficient with the lowest order is the first entry and the coefficient uh, corresponding to the highest order is um, the last entry so we take b2 times n because the second entry in b is our slope plus our y-axis intersection which is the first entry in b and now let's fire it up and have a look how well we fit our data so and here it is so here you can see again our noisy data and our fitted linear model that we have created through linear regression so now let's also fit our original model uh, in here just to have a look how well we fit it so so we plot again n against our original signal was x against x and because we now have three signals in it so we have the scatter plot with the noisy observed values we have our uh, values calculated through our regression model and we have our original data um, we can add a land legend to the plot just to um, uh, know which uh, line belongs to which data and the legend plot it's quite easy you can name the different plots in um, in the order that you've plotted it so the first plot was scatter plot the x noise so it's x noise the second uh, plot we will name with uh, regression and the third was original so let's fire it up and let have a, let's have a look so here it is 
So as you can see, again, our blue values are our noisy values, our observed values, our measured values. So then we, just by directly looking at these values, we can see, okay, there is a linear trend in it. <clears throat> so, but how to describe the linear trend? This can be uh, done using the linear regression. So we have uh, created a linear model. This was our matrix X, capital letter, where always the first column are ones and the second columns are the uh, corresponding X axis samples for a model of order two, for a linear regression model order, uh, for a linear regression model of order one, for a linear regression model of order two, we add the third column where we add the values from the X axis uh, to the power of two and so on. So and we see our regression curve or our regression um, plot is the orange one and our original data, our non-noisy data is the yellow plot and as you can see we we are quite good using the linear regression to describe this uh, noisy cloud of values here. So this is where um, um, what you can do with linear regression. And as I already mentioned, you can also use higher order um, models. For example, if you don't have a, 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 this linear um, trend here, maybe you have a more uh, higher order polynomial tr trend, then you would add additional columns to your uh, linear model described by the vector X here. And again, to calculate your uh, regression, regression coefficients, you have different methods. So very common is this backslash operator or using the P in pseudo inverse command, which is internally doing, calculating the more Penrose pseudo inverse. So actually it's not, uh, Matlab and Octave are performing inside the pseudo inverse command they, they're using a singular value decomposition but at the end it's a, a pseudo inverse and the pseudo inverse itself the more penrose pseudo inverse can be calculated um, in this way here so now you should be able to know what is linear regression um, you should be able to perform a simple example using noisy data and fit a linear model through through the data and you know different ways how to calculate this linear model backslash operator or pseudo inverse command and you've also learned a new plot type the scatter plot instead of um, plotting uh, instead of having a plot where the different samples are connected with a straight straight line you only plot the single samples using the scatter plot and yeah that's it that's how to perform a linear regression in GNU Octave. So I will give you some uh, theoretical background in the description um, in uh, in the description below of this video, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.